All right, I'll switch over to the public works uh, garage and office space. All right, and a lot of this will just kind of run together with our public works department. Uh, as we, we, we continue to talk and we continue to talk and we continue to talk, uh, at this point in time in January 2019, I'm just going to make a recommendation to you folks that we take a few dollars and invest it into our current facility at 150 North Maple Avenue and uh, through some encouragement to Mr. Dressler and a couple other folks and, and maintain a nice clean house over there and, and get some kind of uh, fencing that will go around that will camouflage a refuge truck sitting there. Uh, but I just think in the name of what we're sitting here talking about, I don't know where, we, where we're going to find the money or the space to put a public works facility. Uh, we have to begin putting a couple of dollars into what we have over there, or we're going to end up, what I'm getting ready to mention to you, in a situation like sitting down there across the high school with no problem. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's to the city's long-term investment, <coughs> spend a few thousand dollars down on Maple Avenue, clean the place up, a few flowers, a little landscape, a little camouflage, and I think we can we can hang out down there. We don't know what's going to happen with the Hotel Collins. We may be sitting here a hundred years from now when the railroad takes their property back and Hotel Collins is still sitting there. Uh, it's just, I just think it's, it's smart of us with our people and our staff that we just go down there and clean the place up a little bit more and do some sprucing up. We've got uh, some siding that needs to replace. We can do a little landscape around the building and make it a much nicer place uh, for folks that are passing by than just looking like it's just a nasty old, old garage. Uh, had Stevie. Uh, of course, the mayor's been with me, BB. Well, we got a real serious issue at the Nelson property where we store our salt and uh, our coal patch. We did have equipment in there. We managed to be very cautious and not make a lot of earth shaking noise yesterday and get all our equipment out. But a couple, two to three to four inch snow, and that building's caving in. It's caving in. Uh, and we got to have a place to put salt. I mean, we, we have got, these are things that we have to do from a city to our citizens and, and address what we're going to do. The building we got down there now that's full of a bunch of equipment, I don't know if we can't get somebody to put some kind of plastic roof over it for a few thousands of dollars, but yeah, we got to do something. I mean, we, we can't just continue to sit and talk about, but well, we'll get to it next year because we've been doing that for 100 years and we see what we got. So, uh, but I just think that the, the public works the office and the garage, the garage needs some, some help, the roof. <coughs> Gary's been working on maybe the, the heating system and, and things down there, but uh, we've lived down there for a long time. Had uh, nothing with the facility. We do a few things. I think we can live there for a little bit longer. If you wait till springtime to work on the roof, it's got a big deflection right now. You'll be replacing all. You're talking about the roof at Roger Nettleton now. Nettleton. 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 Okay. Can that beam be jacked up? That's, that's what I told Alan. The problem is, Mayor, the the. Three, three foot of the end of that beam is totally rotten oh, off. So, I mean, you can jack it up, but you need to build out that vertical column. It needs to come out into the floor and set under that beam where it's solid again. But then I'm not so certain that there's, I mean, they probably poured that slab 12 inches thick back in the day. So, but if it's not, there's no footing. <coughs> Oh, it probably has 10 million pounds of steel. But they did. Yeah. So the issue is all that's intertwined. There's a big bolt that runs up through the center. I looked at all of this. I mean, if that decides to come, it'll be like a domino. It'll just start pulling the whole thing down, and it's it's like a bowl right now. So even if it rains on it, all that timber and stuff, it's going to start getting watered down. Do you think so. it's quicker and more cost efficient to shovel the roof up on the brick building and move it there, or to put the money into where it's at now? Where the stuff is now, the girders and the trusses are steel. Yeah. In, in the, the brick building. In the brick building. building. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So from that standpoint, you're 
your longevity, I think that's that's probably going to be your best bet. The roof on the wooden structure is absolutely deteriorated. And you're talking about the green building, or the, yeah. which is wood sided too. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, it it needs it just needs to have a fire event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> practice, <laughs> practice, <laughs> practice. Yeah. Um, and these would burn for months. Burn yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, how much do you think it would be to, to put a roof on the brick building? Any kind of estimate? I mean, depending on if you want to put the same plastic stuff back on it. That's what blew off one, the plastic. Yeah, that was on there for 50 years. Yeah. I may have put. Um, metal back on if you, if you do it right. So all that's left in the, in the green wood building is salt, salt and, and a little bit of coal. Yes, sir. And the salt is the only thing that needs to be covered. Yes. It's a, you can cover it with plastic. Which that's what we're doing now. And I don't know that as Stevie and I talk, I mean some of these steel buildings that you can prefab that you can st stick up. I mean, I don't know what they got that thing down there clipping boards, but I know certainly we don't need that elaborate, but uh, I just think it would be nice to, to have that in covered up. I mean, Barnwood Builders and a lot of folks would be licking their chops to get some of those big... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah so the, the city the could... Probably 18 inches or more. Oh, yeah. The city, and they're all solid all the way across. Yeah. 120 some feet. feet. Yeah. I mean, the city could surplus that and, and get an RFP for somebody to come in and maybe make a little bit of money on taking that stuff apart. Yeah. Just the thought. Yeah, so we need to think about it. We, I know we need to do something soon. Yeah. Rebuild. Uh, so it's a matter of you figuring out where you can put your salt in your Yeah. And, and again, we keep talking. Uh, about the, in Pine Street, uh, it just I just I just don't know. I mean, we've we've got a lot of activity going on in the Judah Watson Center, and the number of trucks that would be coming up and down yeah, that here and, get, and cars getting through there is yeah, not the easiest. It's, 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 it's a tight fit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you just talked about putting the parking lot off the end of cul de sac and adding some more uh, some bathrooms and stuff mm -hmm. up there. Yeah, that, that's turning more into a recreation area. Yes. So that's not really conducive to have a public works of business. So, and then we look at, again, we look now at the future of the Nettleton property right now. At least a corner of that world is really important to us. Uh, if we move forward with something else, then we've we've got to think fast. It's okay, where are we going? Right. And, uh, and, you know, some of the places where we, we could go are we're challenged with flood, you know, and I'll say Casey Field down to the baseball parking lot over towards the skate park and all that. You're just, can't do it. Uh, the flood. That's all for another day. Yeah, all for another day. Uh, just real quick then, uh, I think Mr. Douglas, he's got landfill next. Uh, thank you. We're good. We're in pretty good shape. Stevie and I, we've uh, got a good relationship. Dewey has uh, come in and uh, accepted responsibility and communication has been very good. Uh, we're working together. Uh, we need to, uh, right now we're addressing the, uh, the generator. We're addressing that as we speak. We're going to address the gas storage bill, clean it up a little bit. As long as we're in the landfill business, there will always be the need for road improvements up there. And then the build, the administration building itself uh, probably could just use a good makeup. <coughs> Uh, just a fresh coat of paint and uh, check the, the shingles on the roof, that kind of thing. But uh, we, we've we come a long ways in two years at Piers Mountain, I think. Yeah. And I uh, certainly appreciate you folks for believing in us and Stevie when we dug that big hole uh, a year or so ago. Any comments? Thank you. I think we're working with doing his staff on a regular basis to improve how we handle rainwater until we get the first layer of trash over what's a very impervious surface right now. So we, we're trying to do the best we can not to send 
every drop of rainwater hits that tarp to the leachate tank, which then requires Alan to haul a bunch of that. So we had a contractor come back up there and uh, shore up some of the ENS issues so that we're going to make we can to stay ahead of DEQ and keep Mr. Douglas from getting letters from them. And, and we have in our last project, uh, Mr. Douglas, myself, Stevie, I mean, we all walked that with the DEQ folks and everything they pointed out, Sandy put together a proposal and our contractor addressed everything that the DEQ folks pointed out to us on that given day up there. Now, when they come back this spring and we do this walkthrough, I'm sure there'll be another list, but we did. We have addressed everything that they uh, pointed out to us up there from the smallest blade of grass that they thought needed fertilized to uh, picking up the trash. And, uh, and kudos again to the staff. <coughs> uh, one of the nicest compliments we've gotten is how there's not a lot of blown trash around the place up there, so we've, we've done a pretty good job of getting on top of that. Uh, then moving into uh, all kinds of things with, within the Public Works Department. Uh, certainly we continue to work on our streets. You folks have been good to us for allowing us about $175,000 a year to do street paving. We, we hope we're able to continue to, to do some of that. Stevie, we've got another application in with VDOT for Allegheny Avenue. We'll be prayerful and wait till March and see what happens with that. Uh, there are some things that you folks have probably heard about as council people, but uh, up on Hughes Street leading into uh, Overlook, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know the complete history. I was part of that to, uh, as a employee, of course. We provide water, we provide sewer, we provide refuge, and we've just got some pretty rough situation with roads up there. And, and I've talked to one, one homeowner that for some reason pavement goes to the, near his property and it stops. And uh, there are some things that Steve and I will do a, a ride, but we've got to address some things up there. Uh, the other area that is of real concern to us in Public Works is come along Allegheny Avenue, Sunset Hill. Uh, the residents, and I don't blame them, uh, I would not park at the bottom of the hill and walk up those steps when I've got an alleyway in behind me. It is rough, really rough. Uh, it's, it's a gravel alley, uh, but we as a city are going to have to address that. Uh, just getting our refuse trucks in and out up yonder and not sinking in the mud up to the wheel wells. So uh, those things need to, to be done. Uh, I think we've done a good job of connecting things in the city. Uh, and, and our paving, and, and I know you, you folks hear about it, and, and I'm sorry, we hear about it. Uh, potholes, they're, they're everywhere. Uh, some of the local communities are making the evening news. Uh, we haven't made the evening news yet, uh, but it's, it's going to continue. And, uh, and, uh, and what's going to happen uh, just over the next couple of nights, it's going to bubble up again. So, uh, you did not lose any here at the bottom. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> You're interested in it. <laughs> so, but we're, we're, we're getting on them as, as best we can, and we appreciate your calls to Mr. Douglas, to me, and, and we are. It's not, when you let me know, I, as soon as I get through with you, I'm on the phone with the girls, we're giving it to the guys, and it might not happen within that 24 hour, but it's, we're, we're getting to them. So, uh, me and, and, and Stevie, we had talked about with all the streets we have, with the amount of dollars, the number of streets we pay every year, how long it would take to pay every street in the city. You, you recall that? 20 years. 20, 20 years. So, just so you know, we're, we're doing, we're, we're paving a, a, a nice amount of streets every year, but 20 years to go through the entire system. I mean, the good news is the, the, the increased effort we've put into milling and paving what we're putting down correctly should give us more time than we were getting out of the inch and a half that we were putting down before. So we were never keeping up. So as we put down an inch and a half, before we could even get two blocks away, a couple of bad winters and we're, we're chipping it up, we weren't catching up. So what we're doing now, we're doing it right. We're dressing sidewalk as well as we go. 
We're looking at drainage issues. We're trying to take a more holistic approach so we can walk away from each fiscal year and know that we won't have to go back and touch those areas for quite some time. But when <clears throat> Mr. Douglas prompts me to present their next paving list, I mean, Alan and I will go through there and look, but I, we'll, we'll start to be able to see from a mapping standpoint how much we're knocking off each year for the amount of money that council believes taxpayers have an appetite to pay for. And so if that pace is okay with everybody, then so be it. But I think Mr. Douglas makes a good point. We need to take a look at how much we're actually biting off each year and if it's going to take us forever to go all the way back around and we're going to start getting behind again, I mean, that's a, that's a consideration for council to see if they want to get more aggressive to try to get more paving done than, than what 300 or 275 or whatever we've been putting in the budget will cover. Uh, our drainage issues, of course, are citywide. Uh, a couple things I'll just I'll throw out there at you. Uh, the one thing that we, we really need to work toward is doing another smoke test in, <coughs> around here so we can help George out and have a little teeth and, and a strong arm that when Alan Dressler has got his pipes into our sewer system, by golly, you won't pull it out. Uh, we have a lot of that still in the city. Uh, we, we did that years ago. I just don't know that we encouraged folks hard enough to address them. <clears throat> right. So that, it's something that we have to do that is advantageous to George and to the city and, and all with, with that. The other thing with some of these drainage issues, I might keep toying with it. I may just, when we get into budget, just say, okay, I'm going to put a few thousand dollars here. Uh, we, the city, have created a lot of our problems with our, our paving process over time. Uh, but we probably need to get with somebody to help us out that can go in here and just uh, spend a week cleaning ditches down through Jackson Street and just contract that work out and say, I want all these ditches cleaned out this week and uh, get them done for us and, and help us with some of these things that we're continuously getting beat up. Uh, we did present to you five projects. Uh, certainly, uh, they haven't gotten any better. Uh, so at some point somebody's going to have to say, okay, here's a couple of dollars, at least at least get this one done over in Parish Court because I'm tired of hearing about my child in the water and whatever, just uh, let us know. Uh, but they're out there. Uh, but uh, I just think that we can do a lot with just getting somebody to help us out. Uh, not that we can't do it, but we got so much on our plate and we're asked so much every day of doing this, that, and others. It's just like last year in, in America and he was right there with us. We set out to do Mallow, and that could have easily been, you know, a good week project. And we spent a month over because we get pulled all different directions to do other stuff. And it's just tough for us to set our sights and do one project, get it behind us to move on to something else with all the, the things that, that come up. So, uh, sidewalks. Uh, this year, you folks allowed me $50,000. I spent more than that. I'll be coming back to you maybe in 60 days to say, please help. But uh, we could easily put fifty dollars to $75,000 a year in sidewalk improvement around around the community. I'm hopeful of doing a stretch <coughs> of brick sidewalk on Riverside over the next month. And I say hopeful uh, that we can pull that off and, and just keep chipping away at that and maybe we'll move somewhere else. But right now, that's our historic area. I want to try to get all that cleaned up. We've got concrete sidewalk that we've got to do up here at the old Richardson Vale furniture building. It's it's in horrible, horrible shape. Uh, so those are things that just right off the bat to jump out at me to say, Alan, you we've got to we've got to get it fixed. Uh, so we're we're not shy of both concrete and brick. Uh, 